supporting Trump. And it's the opposite of what my ex-wife says. She says, you know, oh, the system took the kids away from me. No, you got the kids back because of who I was part of the time. And then they sit there and they're like, you know, if you just turn against Trump, things will be better. But he was doing good. And that what makes it so bad. Oh, and that's what makes it so bad. <laughs> He'd have been a piece of crap from the beginning. It would be so bad. going to stop. Yeah, so, so it's... There's, there's no never way. enough unless we put dirt back Hillary in and worship that ugly damn piece of... So I don't want to go on for hours discussing this particular topic, but... Alex Jones on air purported to cry over the actions of Donald Trump. And what I'm briefly popping in to let you know is that this is also a part of the show. You see, we've seen Donald Trump go from hero to heel and on cue, we're seeing the ultimate heel within the alternative media at this point, where at one point he was also a hero like figure or hero archetype that turned villain. But we're seeing Alex Jones purport to cry. Now, even if we look at the body language of Owen, his reporter, you know, I'm not of the perspective that that's even genuine either. You know, that look of, of, of shock, you know, it plays up the Alex Jones, the crazy man persona. And also look at Alex's snow like behavior, acting like he's crying over uh, Donald Trump, quote unquote, crapping on all of us while people, right? That we're just simply not in agreement that Donald Trump represented change we can believe in to make America great again, nor that Hillary Clinton is an option. Just this left-right paradigm is a virus. It is an infection. People like myself have found themselves exiting mainstream society because of their exit from the left-right paradigm. Oh, Alex, if only you could just get behind the Democrat line. Your life could have been so much different in Portland, Oregon. Oh, Alex Ansari, if only you can you can uh, believe the absurd that now America's going to be great again, you know, because of an election. And so, you know, we are really bombarded with this low level intelligence that infects our society, whether you're living uh, in a leftist West Coast city or East Coast city or rural part of America, the red zone, if you will, in rural Colorado, Nebraska, Oklahoma. It's like it's the same reality. It's the same society, right? That's full of reality TV shows, made for TV movies, and a left right paradigm that just never quits. And so, for me to look at someone like Alex Jones and look at the body language and go, this is, this is role playing. And someone that doesn't see that this is role playing is, uh, is not reading the situation for what it is. So when I said last uh, April in 2017, you know, we're going to see a period where people are going to go pro Trump or rather, let me, let me rephrase that anti Trump, but pro Russia, anti Trump, but pro Russia. And, uh, it may take time to really see that come out and to see that come out in other figures, right? I'm waiting to see that happen. Because you cannot hold two positions at the same time when eventually those two powers come against each other. I mean, and that is what's been the plan the whole time. And even if there aren't actual blows thrown right now, the number one headline is how is Russia going to retaliate? Now we've gone through the cycle of will Trump strike Syria? Okay. Now if the strikes have been made. How will Russia retaliate? When will Russia retaliate? That is the question now. The question is, how fast are these things going to move before things get real? Because right now, things are still at the level of where things could be, and Putin coming out with their announcement of the Satan 2 missile, which has been kind of a, an ongoing development from its release to its test just last month. The American people are not listening. There is the left-right sideshow. There is the uh, consumer tainment, disinfotainment reality that is still very dominant. Elements of the alternative media mimicking what's coming out of the mainstream media. Literally like ping pong, back and forth, back and forth. So Alex Jones, the role player, behaves in a certain way to create a certain uh, response in his audience base. 
I'm really curious what that response is from his audience base. Trump loyalists. And also, the thing that needs to be made, point-wise, about Alex Jones is the promotion of mental illness. And so having incompatible belief systems is a part of mental illness. And there are other people that have been taking their cues from him in their own media endeavors and media micro empires where people literally prefer to be told a certain line of thought and they don't really like deviation from outside that line of thought. And in some cases, the radio host or the TV host knows better, but they know ultimately if they spoke their mind, they would be attacked by elements of their audience. They would lose massive chunks of their audience. They might even be kicked off the air. Hell, they could even be somebody who's like a starving artist who's just like doing their own thing like me because they will not conform to the left-right paradigm. So they cannot function in mainline Republican or Democrat circles. And see, most people don't have the, uh, the heart for that, the hardness for that, the toughness for that, to deal with the comments and things that come. When you ride solo and you don't ride dirty, in the left-right paradigm. Stuff's gonna come at you, stuff's gonna fly at you. And not all humans have what it takes to speak their truth before an angry mob throwing rotten tomatoes on both the left and the right. And I've been narrating this for multiple years. Hell, I talked about the insanity of those on the Occupy side of things back in the day. And how just saying, just saying, we should, we should, repeat, repeat, each other, each other. And how that was a big time sign of mind control back in the day. And I was talking about it then. And asking people questions that occupy then. So this is just the latest. You know, because I talked about the mental illness in leftist Portland. You know, having an Obama sticker next to a coexist sticker. And how ultimately that was mental illness. And I talked about that and I offended people in 2010. Here we are in 2018. So if Alex Jones can cry like a little snowflake and express his emotions, what about other people just expressing their opinion that they don't want to suck on Trump's lollipop, to be frank with you? And to partake in a left-right paradigm way of thinking. You know, no, no, there's no need for counseling. After the Trump election, there wasn't a need for counseling. After Barack Obama was elected, I felt sadness. I felt sadness within my own heart. Remember looking outside the glass from where I was enjoying my beer in late 2008. And I was only a few years into my activism, but I just felt that punch in the gut. Like no matter how much I had tried to reach my community about this uh, one world government, I could never reach those that acted like they cared about the anti-war movement. Now that Barack Obama was elected, that was 2008. And then I fast forward eight years later, and while being involved in off-grid activism, the same cycle repeated itself on the right side. But was it really different? Or is it really the same society doing the same thing, calling it itself left and right? Or acting like they're on one side or the other. But really being the same society, if you will, where there is no left-right and there is no urban rule. It's the same society. It's the same culture that will make absolute demons and heroes out of political figures and steer the conversation away from what's happening locally. To make everything a cult. You either believe like us or you're with the other side. And like this dominates the spectrum of American thought. And perhaps beyond. But I would say that, uh, and many Europeans agree, that the Americans take things to a level of psychosis. That in some cases, Europeans don't take it. And for years, I've seen this supremacy. Ooh, America, better than Europeans on, on so many different levels. And I never really understood these elements of the ego that were spoon-fed. It's almost as if like we're socially engineered to become bullies ourselves as adults by living within uh, this society. And some do, or try to. And some that fail at dominating others. In the real world, usually take to the internet to try to exert their, their bully-like behavior in other ways because they're not able to pull it off in the actual real world. You know, we've learned a lot of things about the internet. More specifically, we've learned a lot of things about society from having access to the internet. 
You know, and back in the 1980s, it seems like there was a lot of fairy tale belief systems about how things are and how things work and and how long people can get away uh, with being rotten and evil and corrupted. And then now in 2018, we're really seeing like the product of the 70s, the product of the people of the 80s, the product of the 90s. And it's like, it's a decadent piece of artwork. What's become of all of that excess? You know, just do it. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. Don't ask about what's in the uh, secret ingredient. Oh yes, the 1980s, the rise of the cell phone reality. With 1983 being the rise of the cell phone. But it would be uh, sometime later that we would be in this Android reality. With uh, large numbers of the population running around with iPhones. In their uh, (coughs) pocket areas. Yeah, we're woke now. Yeah, just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. I'm woke. I'm woke with my Diet Coke. But uh, yeah, Alex Jones, the performance artist, acting like, uh, oh, he's just now seeing the light on Trump. But let me just say this in closing. This could be uh, the beginning of Alex Jones playing deeper into this role of, uh, now he's the reporter who's returning to his roots. He cares about the people now. He can see the light. Right. Well, everybody else was a snowflake, right? For not seeing that uh, Donald Trump was uh, the Messiah. But Alex Jones can get a can get a free pass because Donald Trump, he showed us he wasn't really with us. So what does that what does that say about everybody else though that didn't drink the, the Trump Kool-Aid? That they weren't right or or that they were right. No person has ever come to me from 10 years ago and said, Alex, I threw you under the bus for thinking you were racist against Obama and blocking you on Facebook and even former girlfriends. You know, one woman literally like, you like Ron Paul? Dude, Obama's the real deal. I'm blocking you. It's like no one from the old world has ever come back from old Portland to say, Alex, you were really onto something. There really is something about this left-right paradigm. You're not crazy. No one in the history of any of my broadcasts or recordings. And no one from the Trump side has ever come around and said, Alex, you were right. So that's like a big deal and statement to say about society and psychology, about all Democrats and about all Republicans, an inability to realize that they were attacking the wrong person for maintaining their own political independence. We can also see from Alex Jones a promotion of mentally ill behavior and thinking, which is designed to mess up his listeners in a profound way. And people that listen to content like his. It may not even be Alex Jones, but you know, those headlines, those things that are at InfoWars that are also mirrored by others that will falsely call themselves patriots. It's the promotion of mental illness. It's okay for them to say that Trump has betrayed us, but it's not okay for others to see that two years in advance. That's crazy. And they're the sane ones. <laughs> they're the sane ones. And see, it's a promotion of mental illness while they call for harm to be done to those that disagree with them. Take note of what's going on. And let's see where America goes in the next few years.